These are the five coins that I have on my radar for the month of August. All of them have some interesting and juicy upcoming catalysts that could drive a lot of eyes onto these cryptocurrencies. And as we know, where the attention goes, the price tends to follow. That is, of course, assuming that big daddy Bitcoin allows us to have a bit of fun in altcoin land. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic that you would like to learn some more about, make sure you are a subscriber to the Lark Davis channel. It only takes a quick moment to hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're down there, just a quick tap on the thumbs up button. Real easy to do. Just a quick click and you're all done with that. And if you want to know when I put out a new video, you should also click on the notification bell to know when I do that. You'll get a little notification coming through saying, hey, Lark's made a new video. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this topic without any further delays. We're going to talk about Ethereum first. Oh my gosh, Lark's talking about Ethereum again. Come on, Lark. <laughs> well, yes. Yes, we are talking about Ethereum again. And look, Ethereum has had a great recovery since its um, point back there a couple weeks ago where we got down to oh, $1,750 or something like that. Ethereum's gone up quite a bit since then. But what about moving forward? What do we have to look forward to in the future of Ethereum? Well, you know, a lot of stuff, obviously. But very, very soon, in fact, in just a few days, we are going to get the London hard fork. This is going to come in just a few days, August 4th. Absolutely incredible. Now, the London hard fork, it's bringing in a few different things. The one thing that gets everybody most excited, without a doubt, is EIP-1559. This is going to bring in fee burning for Ethereum. So essentially, uh, a lot of different transactions that happen on the Ethereum network will then burn off a little bit of Ethereum. This is a pretty big deal for the long-term economic impact of Ethereum. I've made multiple videos on the topic. You've probably seen a few of those. This is a major, uh, major upgrade to the network. Now there has been some rumors going around the rumor mill that this is not happening anymore. Or it's not going to move forward. That is uh, only rumor, only rumor. There has been nothing from the team except that, yeah, this is going forward. It's already been pushed out to nodes. People are upgrading. People are getting ready for it. This is coming. It's only a few days away. So don't listen to the random people who are saying it's not going to happen. If there is going to be any delay at this 11th hour, it'll be uh, from official team members and developers. So watch for their accounts. Don't watch for the, the randos out there saying that things are going to go bad with this. Watch for the official word from official sources. But it's going to go forward August 4th is the day for that to happen. Now, some people might be expecting a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of event for this. Part of me thinks not necessarily going to be the case. And look, maybe there's a, a short sell-off. People might, uh, the day before, push up the price a bit in expectation of this, followed by potentially a short sell-off thereafter for the, the price speculators who pushed it up, then, of course, expecting it to come back down. But I think the long-term economic impact of this is massive and will actually continue to drive the narratives behind Ethereum because we're going to start burning ETH in just a few days. It's going to start getting deflationary pressure coming in on it. And obviously another big thing that's going to continue to drive interest through August and really through the rest of the year for Ethereum, EIP 3675. 3675. This is, of course, the ETH2 merge and a proof of work moving to proof of stake. That's going to be a big deal. That's going to continue to drive a lot of excitement in Ethereum. The fact that we're going to proof of stake for Ethereum, I'm personally excited about it. And I know that the market will be as well. By the way, if you want to stay up to date with all the little details happening in the market, you got to get yourself a membership to Wealth Mastery. It is the weekly report that my team and I make to help keep you ahead of the curve in these markets. Every single issue, you're going to get a deep dive altcoin report. You're going to get a step-by-step -step decentralized finance tutorial. Last week, we made a tutorial on how to earn 19.4% on your dollars using the Anchor Protocol. 
top tier technical analysis, the latest token sales, the latest airdrops, an interview with an industry leader. Last week, we talked to the team from Power Ledger, all of that and much, much more for less than 10 bucks a week, meaning this is the most value packed and at the same time, the most affordable investor report on the market. Go ahead and click on the link down below where you can learn more and become a member today. The second coin, Polygon, our old buddy, Polygon. This coin has been incredible. This was uh, yeah, a massive, massive gainer for me. And I didn't take, I didn't take profits when I got up to like $2.50. I did take uh, profits around like a buck 15, buck 16, something like that. Obviously, I missed out on the, the maximum gains for it, but I'm actually still holding the majority of my Polygon bag because I think that there's still a lot of gas left in the tank on this coin. I think the next price targets I would be watching uh, you know, as the market becomes more bullish would be $5 and $10 for Polygon. Now, there's a few things that are, I believe are going to continue to push uh, people into Polygon. And one of those, of course, is Ethereum itself. Because Ethereum has not moved to proof of stake yet. And yeah, we are getting scaling solutions coming out for Ethereum, which is awesome, obviously. Um, Optimism and Arbitrum, they both released their uh, technology on the Ethereum mainnet. You can use those now. So that's really cool. But, but there's still a very strong case for layer two scaling solutions or you know, an Ethereum sidechain, which uh, Polygon is, because the gas prices still go crazy from time to time. Cats, again, have screwed up the Ethereum blockchain, at least for an hour the other day. Stoner Cats, an NFT series released by the celebrity Mila Kunis, um, sent gas prices up to 600 guay for about an hour. That's crazy, crazy high prices. Ethereum still is struggling with its scaling capabilities. And yeah, we got, you know, Optimism has come in for Uniswap and Synthetix has hopped on Optimism and Reddit's on Arbitrum. There's still a strong case for Polygon though because you can enter the Polygon ecosystem and all of a sudden you have access to all of these different decentralized finance applications like Curve Finance, and sushi swap and one inch and all these other different platforms it's a great experience over there and you pay dirt cheap fees so i think as long as the ethereum fees remain as they are there's a very very strong use case for polygon and thinking beyond that too polygon is continuing to innovate they're also working on other layer two uh, scaling solutions for ethereum beyond their side chain they're also working on gaming so this is a pretty cool one so they've brought out a blockchain gaming and NFT ecosystem arm for the, the whole Polygon network. So this is super cool. Polygon Studios, if you will. Gaming, obviously a very big thing. Um, I think that a lot of games that exist on the Ethereum mainnet struggle, which is why, for example, Axie Infinity, I don't know if you know this, but Axie Infinity actually launched their own Ethereum sidechain which is one of the things that allowed for Axie Infinity to absolutely explode because people were able to use the Ronin sidechain and they didn't get stuck on having to pay those high fees on the Ethereum mainnet. Gaming is going to be massive. Polygon's tapping into that right now. So again, I remain bullish on Polygon moving forward. The third coin on our list is Terra's Luna Token. Now the Terra ecosystem, super interesting. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to play around with it yet, but there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. The Anchor Protocol, for example, you're getting 19.4% on stable coins right now. That's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs right there. I mean, that's some crazy stuff. Uh, the Mirror Protocol allows you to essentially be a market maker for the stock market. Synthetic stocks, mind you, but still, you can go and buy Microsoft or Tesla stocks and you can be the market maker for those stocks with some really high APYs as well. And they're bringing in a whole range of exciting new products. There's a whole lot of things going on. In fact, Terra is doing $150 million to help create their DeFi ecosystem. So they've already got some interesting early applications that have got a lot of user interest. 
And now they're throwing 150 million bucks in for even more DeFi to come onto their platform. And there's some really big upgrades coming that I think you really need to have on your radar if you are a Terra investor or if you're thinking about investing in uh, Terra. So this is um, from a guy over at uh, one of the venture capital firms. He wrote up some very important things you need to know. So there's three key upgrades coming as part of what is called the Columbus 5 upgrade. Now, the three things you have to be aware of with this upgrade that potentially are big price catalysts for the Luna asset. One is the burning of all seniorage. Now, right now, if you want to issue out UST, which is the dollar stablecoin of the Terra ecosystem, you uh, actually burn Luna to do that. Part of that uh, burning fee also goes to uh, pay oracles and ecosystem fund, etc. But now all that's getting burnt. So it provides even more pressure on the Luna asset itself in terms of price going up to the Luna, to the moon. <laughs> See what they did there? It's funny. Um, number two is the upgrade to Stargate. So this is going to bring them in to the Cosmos Inter blockchain connection ecosystem. That's going to be really, really big um, moving forward with that. And uh, they're also bringing out new, uh, very important applications. One of them is called Ozone. Now, Ozone is actually an insurance protocol. So this would be the uh, early mover in the insurance zone on Terra. I'm very bullish on insurance overall. So I'd be very keen to see what that looks like. And obviously, I think the insurance space is a highly competitive one and one which is definitely ready for more competition. And then they're also bringing in Wormhole. Wormhole is a Terra to Solana bridge. So all this stuff right here is mega, mega important. It all has good, um, positive price catalysts for the Luna asset. Now, the fourth coin on our list here today our old buddy, Polkadot, man, Polkadot, ah. Got some decent orders filled on that during the market slump. I didn't get my lowest order bids put in, but hey, you can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want, but I did get some decent ones anyway, so that's good. Now, Polkadot, I'm very bullish on this blockchain moving forward, and I think it's a very, very interesting time to be paying attention to it because of the ecosystem that is growing around it. So Kusama, the canary network for Polkadot, essentially Polkadot's little brother, they've already had their first five parachain auctions. That's obviously really, really cool. Now of these five auctions together, they locked up more than 10% of the total supply of KSM, which is very impressive when you think about it because Kusama can have, you know, let's say they have a hundred parachains. That's some pretty crazy price implications when you start to understand locking up all that supply, bonding it for a year or two years for these parachains. That's a big damn deal. Now, what we saw happen with Kusama was a, a, a super, super epic sell-off uh, after the first parachain auction went through. The price of Kusama went down like, I don't know, 50, 60 percent. But in the lead up to that, the price went up hundreds of percent. So, you know, perspective, right? Which is why I'm talking about Polkadot today. Because here we are, we've entered the polka dot era of parachains becoming a real thing. They're live on Kusama right now. These guys are active. They're doing stuff. Which means that polka dot's uh, big brother chain, the dot network, it's going to have its parachains coming in the not so distant future. And I would suspect we're going to see some announcements around that pretty gosh darn soon. Now, does that mean we're going to see an announcement tomorrow or next week? Who knows? But soon, I think very, very soon, we're going to see parachain auctions announced for the Polkadot network. And that means we're going to see that hype building in to the launch of parachains on Polkadot. So there you go. There you go. It's a bit of 
bit of price speculation around what could happen with the, the coming Polkadot parachains. We don't know when exactly it's going to happen. We haven't given a timeline for that. But the fact that the Kusama parachains, we've got our first five ones. They're active. They're live. The auctions have happened. Nothing exploded. It, it's looking pretty good for uh, Polkadot's parachains to come in here in the not-so-distant future. So I think when it does, it's going to drive a whole new wave of enthusiasm for the Polkadot ecosystem and particularly the DOT asset. Final one for today. Number five. Cardano. Cardano. Cardano, man. Cardano has been just a very, very strong coin during the last year, really. Absolutely crazy coin. It's still up, I think, like 60x or something off of its price about this time last year. Very incredible price action here for Cardano. We've seen, of course, the proof of stake network growing very, very strong. I think like 72% uh, of the current supply of of ADA is staked. Very impressive, very decentralized network. They've done a lot of things. We now have um, a lot of tokens starting to launch projects, token sales starting to come out. We have some NFTs in a rather simpler form, NFTs that exist on Cardano now. We also have um, products like uh, OCAM, which is one we mentioned here on the channel a few times. They're working with a whole bunch of different stuff. So they're, they're a launch pad. They've got an Ethereum to Cardano bridge that they've set up. They actually just got invested in by what's called the C Fund, which is uh, Charles Hoskinson's um, big fund that he's running as well. So we're seeing these, these early movers in terms of be, building out the infrastructure for the Cardano ecosystem starting to come out. And why are we seeing this all happening now? Why are we getting all these projects launching at this time, getting ready for what? Well, they're getting ready for smart contracts coming on Cardano. Now, at the moment, looks like September could be the launch date uh, for smart contracts on Cardano. I know the initial estimates were sort of like late July or August sometime, but it's coming. It's coming. I mean, we're not that far away at this point. Uh, September, what, that's, we're talking, what, eight weeks? Something like that. Let's say the end of September, right? Really not that far away at all. The smart contracts, I'm running on the test net now for two months, six weeks, something like that. I can't remember exactly when they, they came out, but they've been running on the test net for a while now. This is really good. We're, we're seeing the ecosystem already starting to build out, much in the same way that we saw with Polkadot, where before, um, you know, the parachain started coming, you started to see a lot of builders coming in, start to see a lot of uh, different projects and products starting to get ready for that launch, preparing for that launch of smart contracts. And it's getting very, very close at this point. And I know there's still a lot of haters out there that are saying, oh, you know, Cardano's never going to deliver smart contracts. They're going to deliver smart contracts. It's coming very, very soon. And with as with all tech delays, or, all, all tech delays. As with all tech releases, expect delays, which is, you know, the more optimistic uh, time frame was for July uh, or August. Now it's looking like September. September's not that far away. We're going to have smart contracts on Cardano by the end of the year, which means we're going to have uh, product launches. We're going to have applications. We're going to have people starting to integrate to access the liquidity or to build out liquidity on Cardano. So I would not be surprised to see the market starting to build anticipation into that coming launch for Cardano throughout the month of August, especially if we get in the month of August a firm date for the launch of those smart contracts. So Cardano, definitely one, as always, to keep an eye on. They're always doing doing things, moving forward with their technology bit by bit. It's, you know, they're the tortoise in the race, but um, they're getting there. They're getting there. They're almost there. Anyway, those are just my two Satoshis or Gways or Dots or whatever you want to do for the day. Your question. What coin did I not talk about but should have absolutely been on my top five list for August? Let us all know down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.